heat. Sorry, my, okay, can everyone see my screen? Just wanna make sure. Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so this is the ADP workforce now. Um, I just wanna, our topics for today is the overview of the revised timekeeping policy, um, editing own timesheets, approving own timesheets, and reviewing schedules. Um, uh, to, to just um, give you a breakdown, the time and attendance work, workflow process, mm -hmm. it's gonna originate first from the employees and then um, you know, the employees will perform the time entry either by swiping um, for individuals that doesn't have access to swiping their badges. They have access using um, a computer from their work site. And if they don't have access on the computer in the work site, work site we provide them access um, with the ADP mobile. So after the time entries has been entered by the individuals, um, the supervisors will edit and approve the time cards and the practitioner, which is um, the accounting department, will process payroll. Hey, Jennifer? Yes. Who am I speaking with? This is I'm sorry, who? This is Patrick from Martinez. We have a question for you over here. Sure. What is your question, Patrick? My name is James Benfield, and I'm not comfortable navigating the website. When I click on things, it says, you have unsaved data. Are you sure you wish to continue? So I always click no and stop because I don't know. I haven't changed anything and it keeps giving me the message. Okay. Um, it sounds like that is the security from um, our system. Um, may I suggest using Google Chrome or Firefox? Um, I believe you get that message under Internet Explorer. What platform do you use? when you get that message? Oh. Oh. Uh, I use like it my email and it comes up, I guess, Chrome. No, okay, so you. if, yeah, if you can use like Firefox, just use an alternative, um, alternative platform to access it, then you should be okay. Okay. All right, sounds good. All right, so um, any more questions before I continue? No, I mean, we got to get a hold of you. I mean, I haven't even been able to get on this stuff yet, so I got to get a hold of you via email to get access codes, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. You can, um, email, you can email me or you can call me, um, and I have a team that um, can assist you as well. So okay. um, if you send me an email, then I'll forward it to my team member that is available that can assist you. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. You're very welcome. All right, so the employee's role um, is the person that clocks in and out in the system. Uh, they also enter their own adjustments for the times that they miss their time cards, or let's say they work off-site and they don't have access to clock in and out, then they enter their own adjustment and what department that they worked in. They also view their own timesheet and the schedule, um, personal information and attendance information. So, you know, we just want to make sure that all your information in ADP is accurate. So in the times that, um, you know, you move, um, you can update your information in ADP. Um, and if you have, um, if you're on call and you see patients um, based on on call, um, you enter your own supplemental earnings as well. And you will be also responsible for notifying your managers for any time off requests. Are we, are we okay? Um, did I hear something? We're good? Okay. And the supervisor and manager's role, they correct the time cards, they assign employee schedules, they also approve employee time cards and time off requests. Jennifer. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. 
This is Juanita. For the instructors, they will not have a scheduled um, schedule, correct? No, not the uh, instructors. Okay, you guys hear that? You won't have a schedule populate, but you too will. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and also, managers and supervisors can generate reports. One of the reports that the managers can generate is the audit report. Um, we just want to make sure that all employees are still using the first means of clocking in and out, which it could be swiping or you know either the workstation or the mobile. We just don't want the employee to just keep editing their time card um, because they forgot to swipe. Because um, excessive time edits like you do on your own may be questioned by the manager. Okay, okay. so for the practitioner, oh, hello, yes? No, no, we said okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Practitioner's role. Um, we're the one that housed the schedules we created in behalf of the managers. We sent out email notifications um, to the team. Um, we maintain employee information. We also generate reports and we're the one that process payroll. So some of the changes in the timekeeping policy is employees will be responsible in entering their their edits on a weekly basis and at, at, and at the end of the pay period. Um, employees are also responsible for reviewing um, their information if it's accurate and also complete at the end of the pay period. Um, our live date is today. Um, so for the edits that you have for 10-1 to 10-15, that is still done. It's that is still done by your manager. For um, 10 16 to 10 31, you will be able to do those edits. Um, currently, it, the the time edits to do on your own is turned off until we process payroll tomorrow. So most likely on Wednesday, you'll be able to log in an ADP and um, enter your own time edits if needed. Okay. And just to let you guys know, anything that is incomplete and unapproved um, timesheets may result to non-payment and or late payment. So it's very important for an employee to still log in there and um, approve their own to review and then click on approve the timesheet. And then the same thing is true with the manager. After your staff um, approve their timesheet, you're also responsible to approve their timesheet so that payroll can process um, their time card. Um, electronic scheduling is going to be utilized in the ADP system. Again, this doesn't really pertain to instructors, just because uh, we understand the team has a constant change on schedules. Like I heard it's daily. All right, so with now, we are going to log in in ADP. <laughs> So the website is workforcenow.adp.com. You just enter your username. Okay, let me just find out what the password is. Give me a minute. Can't remember. All right, here it is, found it. All right. Okay, so um, this is the view that you will see um, on the homepage. Um, for employees that has access to um, clocking in out using their workstation, they'll see the clock in and clock out, the transfer departments, and um, just click on my time card. For individuals that does not have access for clock in and clock out using the workstation, they'll still be able to see my time card, like just this button and then annual summary and supplemental pay codes. We also post like when the time cards are due and when the pay date, pay date is. So, you know, you can't say like, hey, I don't know when the time cards are due. It's posted in ADP for your information. And um, birthdays are posted in ADP um, for the month. So we, we try to update this for um, everyone so that they can, um, you know, see who are the individuals celebrating for the month. Under resources, this one is still a work in progress. Um, uh, we will go ahead and start uploading information. Um, momentarily, 
it's these items are empty, but eventually we're going to start loading information in here. Me and HR are you know, working hand in hand to get these items up and running under resources. Under myself, um, there's the personal information tab where you can view your personal profile, information of your dependents and beneficiaries. Um, talent profile, this is something that we're not utilizing in ADP. Um, we have a different system that we use um, that HR is using. Under employment, you'll be able to, of course, see your employment profile, what department you're in, and I believe um, your title and your manager's information. Um, time position info, it just tells like what is your pay class in ADP. Pay classes are, you know, um, if you are using a mobile, if you're using a, a, a punch in or punch out using a swipe system, you know, that's just what the pay class is. Under pay, you can uh, uh, review your accrued time, calculators like for hourly employees, because I know some of their hours changes um, between 80 to 88 for the pay period, and sometimes even 96 on certain pay periods. So if you're just curious what you're going to be your take home pay is, you can have an estimate under calculators. Um, direct, direct deposits, you can update your direct deposits here. Um, you can review or add your direct deposit in this category. Tax withholdings, this is where your federal and, and state tax where you can update it. Um, if you want to go exempt, you still need to complete the W-4 form and to be emailed to me. You still can't go exempt under tax withholdings. However, you can change it from one to two, one to five, or five to zero, you know, in ADP. Pay statements. Pay statements is where you can also view your um, pay statement information and your W-2 for the previous year or the prior year F with the previous year. <laughs> um, it just depends how long you've been with, with the company. Um, and then this is where the bulk of our conversation is going to be under time and attendance. So under time and attendance, you want to go under my time card. So for this employee, um, Mila Kenya Zachary, she is actually um, missing a punch, like a, a punch in the morning for CAN5. In order to create an additional row, what you need to do is you click on this three little bars right here, one where the date is, and then go ahead and click on add blank row. So let's say she started at 8 a.m. You just type in 8A, and then you just click on the box, like so, and just type in 12P. You don't need to worry about pay codes. Um, pay codes are for, um, you know, if, let's say, you called out sick and you want to use a certain hours for that time, and then you can just choose the pay code of PTO. But if it's just regular hours or normal, normal hours that you work, you can just leave it blank and hit save. Okay, so let's say from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., um, the shift is on a different location. Um, currently, it is under care on site Martinez. That's where um, the department is being coded. So let's say this person actually worked at Diablo or DCPP. So under, um, under departments, I just want to show where I clicked that. You go on the magnifying glass. And then just type in um, Diablo, and then the the department is going to show up. You just click on the ID, which is here, and then hit save. So that's how you transfer department. And then um, with, for whatever personal edits that you do, you always need to put a note for a reason why that you did the edit. Let's just say um, the edit is because it has no access to clock in and out because it has to report in the, on a different location. So to add a note, you want to click on the date again on those three little bars and then click on add note and just say um, no access to time to time clock. <laughs> You could run off site at PCC Quick Screen Finding Search. Is there someone asking a question or I can't oh, hear? No. no. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. And then for um, times that let's say you accrue overtime, like for example, 
this one, um, this individual worked from 5.59 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. on 10.30. And um, as you can see, this person didn't take lunch and also accrued um, 1.5 overtime. So we just need to put a note for the reason. So you just want to, again, click on the highlight the time or the date that needs to be entered a note. So you see the three bars here, just click on it and then add note. And then let's say the, um, no lunch due to short staff. And then um, OT um, due to, I don't know, um, let's just say BOT checkups. I, I'm just making this up, so I don't know. <laughs> so, and then you just click on okay. So at least there's a reason when your manager um, goes through your time card, they know the reason why you didn't take a lunch and what, what prohibited you from taking a lunch and then what's the reason of your overtime. So just go ahead and hit save. And then um, let's say you want to um, enter a PTO because you called out sick on Friday, 10-6. So what you want to do is you just put in the normal schedule that you would work, but you need to take one hour. Let's say you work from eight to five, but eight to five is reality. In reality, it's nine hours. So in order for you to post your PTO, you want to put eight to four, so it's eight hours. So just put in 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then under pay code, just click on the magnifying glass and then click on, um, you can search for PTO. Um, and then you want to, you always want to choose PTO. The PTO Honeywell, those are for our Honeywell staff. And then just go Jennifer, ahead and hit save. Yes. Jennifer, you can, yes. Only use, you can only use PTO in one hour increments, correct? That is correct. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, I, and then I'm just going to make up, um, a punch in. Let's say you entered a punch by mistake. Like let's say, oh shoot, that, that's I, I meant to say 4 a.m. to 12 p.m., not a.m. And um, oh, let's just say this is an incorrect um, punch in and punch out. Let's just say, hey, you know what? Um, this is incorrect. I need to delete this row and modify it. In order for you to delete a row, you want to highlight the incorrect um, row and then go on the three lines right here and then just click on delete row. And I just like hitting save every time I do um, a, a change just because, you know, just for safety. Because sometimes, you know, um, what if the computer freezes and I don't want to redo my work over again? So that's the reason why I keep hitting save. But you can. Do your all all of your edits at once, and then hit save. Um, and then let's say you just want to use your schedule, and you don't want to deal in like entering, you know, nine to five. You just want to click on the three lines again, highlight the date, and then you can go ahead and click use schedule, and it's going to automatically populate it in what department. And then I just hit save. And then let's say all of the um, all of the punches are correct, and you're ready to send this to your manager. You want to click on approve time card. You're just saying like I'm agreeing that these are my hours from 10:1 to 10:15, and I'm okay with that. And then it's already been sent to your manager. So if you're curious, what are these lines? Like this little arrows here, this yellow dot, and that red arrow. Um, we have an option where you can click on the legend. It gives you all the breakdown of all the, the icons that you may see here on your timesheet. So by clicking that, it gives you an explanation on what it is. Another way is to just hover on that, and then it tells you what it means. Like this one says clock out late. And um, under this view, you'll be able to print your time card as well. You want to you want to go here under time card, and then click on that three bars, and then just click on print time card. A new window is going to pop up. 
if you don't see a new window popping up, it means your pop-up blocker is on and that, that stops it from coming up. And then here's a copy of your time card and you can make an option if you want to just compare it with your schedule. You can have that as well. You can just click on that and whatever exceptions that it may have, it's going to print that there as well. Then you can just hit print and then that's it. Okay. Now, like, let's say um, you want to see what your hours were on the previous pay period. You just like click down here and then it gives you like an option on what are the times and days that you want to review. Or you can just actually click on the calendar and then you can change it. All right, and then the second tab is um, totals. It just gives you all the totals for the week. Schedule, it gives you just a copy of your schedule for the entire pay period. Supplemental pay codes, again, these are for individuals that have call time and call patient. Time off balances, these are for our full-time employees and California employees that accrue sick time. You'll be able to see your balances here. And then I, um, we also have a good refresher tool here at the page of um, ADP. If there's anything that you forget, like I say, you, for, you forgot how to delete a row. Um, um, on this word, my time card, you see this little play button right here. You can just click on that. And then my time card learning bytes, it gives you like a breakdown of all the topics that, you know, just uh, a frequently asked questions like, hey, how do I approve my time card? Then you can just click on that and then it'll tell you how to approve your time card. It's like a, a short um, video on it tells, uh, you know, it just goes in detail on how to do it line by line. All right, um, any questions so far? Questions? No. no. Okay. So that's just how to edit your timesheet and to approve your timesheet. That is just like um, a quick a quick show on how to do it. Now the next thing that I want to go over is um, time off on how to do um, time off requests. Um, so under myself and time off, um, the tab that says request time off, you want to click on that. And again, um, there's also learning bytes here if you need a refresher. So you just click on that play button right there and it's gonna tell you how to put a time off. So for here, it just also gives you a calendar as well of your schedule for you know the month of October. Um, when you're ready to put, on, to put in your time off, you just click on request time off and then you enter the date. So let's say it's for October 25th, it's only for one day. So, but if you want it for one week, you just put in 1025th and then let's say you plan on returning on 1031. So it says there seven days, you just do eight hours here and then you just put in comments like, oh, you know, um, personal time off and then respond by, because this is gonna go to your manager, so request for your manager to reply by, 1020 so that you can, you know, make sure you have, you, you can actually go on your time off and start planning. And then just hit submit. Your manager will, will get an email notification. Um, again, um, for individuals that don't work on a Saturday or a Sunday, you don't have to worry about it. It's just going to automatically skip Saturday and Sunday. So your, your manager is going to get a request and then your manager would either deny or approve your request. And then let's say, for example, you want to return early and you said, you know what, I don't need to be off all the way down to 1031. So you need to modify your request. You just, <laughs> again, go to myself, time off, request time off. You can just click here on 1031. You can either click the pencil to edit or you can just click on the X button to cancel the request. And then reason for canceling, you can just say change my mind and, you know, it's going to go to your manager. So, so that's how you request a time off. And then um, if you want to review all of the time off requests that you've done for the year, you want to go under myself, time off, and then list of requests. 
Jennifer, if you don't have PTO available, can you still submit your vacation request that way? Um, yes and no, but instead of using um, PTO, it's going to be excuse with pay or excuse or without pay. Um, but I really recommend for the individual to have PTO in ADP before putting in the request. Just because, you know, um, so just because like to make sure that we have, we have the right documentation for the PTO. And then for excuse with pay, um, the manager can even edit that if, if, <laughs> if the manager feels that it's an excuse. Like let's say they put excuse with pay and you said, no, you can't go, I deny this. And then they still went to um, take, take it as a PTO anyway. So first of all, that's a disciplinary thing. And then you can change it to unexcused without pay. Does that make sense, Juanita? Yes. All right, cool. All right. So if you just want to review what are the requests that you've put in for the year, you, you can just like, you know, go to that category. And then for um, individuals that has schedules in the system, you want to go under myself, time and attendance and then you want to go under my schedule for individuals that actually changes um, work locations you want to hover on the date and click on it and then it tells you where you should be reporting so like this one is um, in par Hawaii here they have to go to p66 um, Rodeo but um, and then if you just want to view it for the week you want to go under myself time and attendance and then schedule at a glance I think yeah, I'm just going to view, view schedule it goes back there and then actual versus schedule it's just a breakdown um, yeah it's current pay period there you go it just gives you a breakdown of what the actual that you work versus what was scheduled, and it just gives you a quick comparison. And um, is there any questions so far? No. 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 Okay. Um, I will be um, emailing everyone a handout on the ADP, what we just talked about. And you can also log in into ADP and click on the Learning Bytes tool if you need a refresher on what we had gone over. Um, if there's any questions, you can email me. My email is jennifer.durosti at caronsite.com. And my extension is 1150. Cool. So, yep, and this concludes our ADP training, and I wish everyone good evening. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you, you a lot, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer, thank you. for doing that cool. extra for us. Thanks. Yes, you're very welcome. Bye. Cool. Thank you. Ooh, Bye.